you know, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in Rio Earth Summit last year said, more of the same will not do. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about Denmark, whether we're talking about South Africa or Vietnam, that everything we do when we deal with culture, social, economic and environmental sustainability, we have to rethink what we're doing. And that, so the question is, whether it's a very small institution, whether it's a big institution, if they can work together, they can start rethinking you know, the way they go about their business. Uh, like for instance, everybody's talking about digitization. But then they talk about digitization as if it's something different from participatory democracy, different from diversity, different from productive diversity. But digitization you know, offers many opportunities to engage citizens, to promote participatory democracy, it, it makes it much cheaper to engage with culturally and linguistically diverse communities uh, when we're dealing with a whole range of cultural groups. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, good, good business, cultural diversity is good business because if you engage with all your stakeholders, it's good for your core business, you know, as a museum. And uh, so the principles cut right across. Uh, so, and I, and I think that you need two kinds of approaches. You need one from within the museum to open up, and uh, another one is more a national approach in terms of cultural policy development. Mm. Does Denmark have a national museum policy? This is the question. If it does, well, these principles offer an opportunity to evaluate it from an international point of view mm. and professional point of view because it's ICOM. But if it doesn't have it, then the principles provide a starting point to start developing such a national policy. So I think that resources are always important, but it's how we invest those resources mm. to ensure that we're doing good business at the end of the day. i tell you one thing that I have really enjoyed in the last one year in Denmark is you've got fabulous museums, you've got wonderful people, you have wonderful collections. And uh, I'm not so sure that the access to capacity building programs that they have, you know, are actually relevant for them in 21st century. Uh, there might be one or two here, but uh, a lot of them that I have seen and I've talked to people. So I think that the people in the museums have the competency to do what they're doing now, but will they have the competency to do what they have to do in t tomorrow is the issue. and. Transformation is not about reinventing the wheel or using the jargon, but transformation is rethinking the mission, rethinking the purpose of what you're doing and why you're doing it, how you're going to do it, and how you're going to measure, you know, what you've learned, you know, sort of. So in that sense, there's a huge demand in Denmark, you know, for capacity building, um, both at the pre-entry level, that is, at the, before they get into the museum sector, but also the post entry after they get into the sector at different levels, uh, there's a huge demand. Mm. Well, I think that the evidence is speaking loud and clear that and, uh, and uh, politicians do make decisions based on the public opinion because they want to be re-elected. It doesn't matter which country you go to, they're all, they all do the same thing. That's the nature of democracy. And I think that you know, I have seen museums, you know, that ran into trouble in very rich Western countries because they didn't adequately address the question of relevance. I mean, the most popular one in the media right now is the largest museum in Netherlands, the Tropen Museum, because the Dutch government has cut the funding to the Tropen Museum, complete funding, and then they released a little bit of money by saying that we don't need three big ethnographic collections that reflect colonial times. Why don't you all work together? Second thing is that you are engaging with communities, but you're not engaging enough to make yourself relevant and economically viable. Whether we agree with it or not, because we can discuss and debate the Dutch government's position on this towards the Tropen Museum, but this is what happens. And uh, political decisions do influence you know, the survival of museums, but then sometimes, you know, it, like I was telling you about tango before, it takes two to tango. And uh, so how do museums themselves work together, 
how do museums actually uh, engage with contemporary realities? Mm -hmm. An obsolete museum will not survive in the 21st century because mm -hmm. an obsolete museum is not attractive to people, and uh, which is what the French did. They had two museums where, which had fantastic collections, but there was a certain amount of resistance. So by the presidential mandate, you know, a new museum was created, the Cape Bronley, and the collections from the two museums were brought into the new museum. And the curators tried to block people removing the collections, but the police moved in. This is historical in a museum for something to like, something like that to happen. So there's no room for obsolete museums. But on the other hand, museums have collections, and collections are permanent liabilities of the state. And uh, that means they have to be cared for. And so a museum might not be viable, but the collections are part of our common heritage. And increasingly with global, globalization, they are the common heritage of humanity. Mm.